Hi guys and welcome to Medical Terminology. I'm going to be doing some new videos for this semester. Um, the reason for this that kind of prompted some new videos and some new content for Medical Terminology um, really is just because we're doing a lot of distance learning. Um, for my college we're doing a little bit of hybrid, so some in phase, some distance, but I feel like a lot of students these days are doing distance learning. Um, but this is really going to be your true introductory. Um, please come back and I'm going to do several videos every week just to make sure that my students as well as students anywhere taking medical terminology have a really good foundation for medical courses. Because if you don't understand medical terminology, all of the stuff you do in your clinicals, uh, when you're doing soap noting, charting, billing and coding, if that is more your side um, of the medical field, it's going to be very difficult if you don't understand medical terminology. So hopefully this helps to illuminate. All right, so let us look at really medical term parts. And there's three components we're going to talk about, and I've got them drawn here as puzzle pieces. And that's really because it's the way that these three fit together. And you can have one root with different prefixes and suffixes that mean totally different things, right? If you have different prefix root with the same suffix, again, a totally different word. So today we're really going to talk the rules in general. Um, and then obviously as we go through different chapter content and I introduce new materials, um, certainly you guys will want to... Um, to, to use these in different contexts, and you'll sort of see how far it expands. Uh, for those of you in my class, um, you will have access to the Google Classroom. Because it is just a website, I will be posting it for all of my YouTube watchers. Um, so if you want to follow along with the class, you are welcome to do so. All right, let's start with root terms. And I realize that's kind of like the middle portion of this puzzle piece. But really, I want to start with the root terms because this gives the main meanings of the word. So if we're talking about an organ, like cardio is heart, right? Gastro is stomach. We're going to see those in a few moments. All right, and it's going to be a root term. And that's the main definition. You can have a term with more than one root term. Today we're just going to look at words with one root term um, to keep things sort of simplified. As we move forward, you're going to see things with multiple root terms. We could be talking about the ears, the nose, and the throat, and you'll see all three root terms. You could be talking about stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and you will see all three root terms. Again, to simplify today's discussion, I'm going to keep it to the one root term. When it's written in the textbook that I'm using, the flashcards and the word lists um, that I have posted, you are going to see that I write all of my root terms with this backslash, or what I call the dash, and the O. The dash and the O is known as the combining vowel. Now, 95% of the time, it is this backslash and this O. However, it could be any vowel. A, E, I, O, or U. Again, 95% of the time, it's O. The only thing here that we kind of learned way back in school was that sometimes Y. In this case, it's never the Y. That's not a true vowel in this particular case. And we're going to come back to why that combining vowel is so important. Okay, we'll see several examples of this. I do want to take just a second to talk about the suffixes. Now a suffix, if you look at this little puzzle piece, is sort of the end portion of the term, and it's going to fit in at the end, right, when we look at this. And as we combine different roots with different suffixes, it's going to give words new meaning. Again, in our textbooks and the way I've done it for all of the flashcards, you will know that a word is a suffix because there's a little dash in front of the terms. And in fact, I've given you an example down below. You see a dash, the term is itis, I-T-I-S, right, itis, which is inflammation. Okay, that is how a suffix is traditionally written with that little dash beforehand. And it sort of represents this little portion here, right, of the puzzle piece, comes before as it goes through. So let's talk a little bit more about this combining vowel, these roots and these suffixes, and how we're going to put them together um, for spelling purposes first before we talk about how to define terms. All right, so if the suffix starts with a vowel, A, E, I, O, or U, you are going to drop that combining vowel, the backslash, the O, or any of the other vowels, before combining the two terms. If the suffix starts with a consonant, right, any non-vowel, 
you are going to keep that combining vowel. And really the reason for this is, is two things. Number one, if you look at it spelled incorrectly and you kind of write these out incorrectly, they're going to look incorrect, right, just to the English I. But as you try to pronounce either two vowels next to each other or too many consonants, right, we're not Slavic languages, right, so we don't put a lot of consonants together and pronounce those. We want them for easy pronunciation. All right, so let's take a look at several examples here. All right, so our first one, our root term that I'm going to give you is cardio, happens to mean heart. Uh, suffix here is myopathy, which is muscle disease, and I'm not going to talk about the definitions too much at the moment. But our root term we can tell is a root term because of our backslash and our O, right? If we were looking at a word list that I've created, that's how we know. And for me, I gave you the suffix, I told you it's the suffix, but we started it with a dash, myopathy, right? So if we started it with a dash, that tells us that that is the suffix. Okay, well, our suffix starts with a consonant. So as we go to spell it, okay, in this case, because the suffix starts with a consonant, we are going to keep that combining vowel O and spell it cardiomyopathy. Okay, not cardiomyopathy, but cardiomyopathy. All right, let's take a look at this one. We've got a root term of gastro, and again, you can tell it's a root term because you've got your backslash and your O. Okay, that's how we're traditionally going to see it in the textbook and in my word list. So you use that as your initial until you just know what's a root term and what's a suffix. Okay, gastro happens to mean stomach. The suffix I'd like you to spell and combine it with is itis, right? You see the little dash in the front that designates it as a suffix, and then itis, itis, which is inflammation. Okay, so our suffix now starts with a vowel. So what was the rule again? I'm going to give you a second to see if you can spell this and then I'm going to show you the proper spelling. Right, so our suffix here starts with a vowel. What do we do with that combining vowel or that dash and that O? Okay, so in this case we are going to drop the combining vowel. It is not gastroitis. It is gastritis, okay? So you can see we kept the I-T-I-S of the suffix, but we dropped that dash and that O, okay, for a proper spelling. Let's try one more. The root term here is hemato, right? Hemato, okay? And you can tell it's a root term because of that backslash and the O, right? That's how I'm going to designate it for our purposes. It happens to mean blood. The suffix I would like you to combine it with is emesis, right, emesis, which is vomiting. Okay, so in order to properly spell this term, okay, what are you going to do with that combining vowel? Are we going to keep it or are we going to drop it? Okay, for spelling and pronunciation, and I'll give you a couple of seconds to consider that and we'll find the answer. All right, so hopefully we remember that when the suffix starts with a vowel, we drop the combining vowel, in this case the dash and the O, and it's hematemesis, okay? Not hematoemesis, okay? So we drop the O because the suffix starts with a vowel. All right, let's take a look at prefixes, right? We looked at root terms, which are main meanings, suffixes, which are endings, and always found at the end of a word. Let's talk a prefix. And by definition, and you can see the puzzle piece here, the prefix here is at the beginning of the word. Now, not every word has a prefix. I'm going to give you several examples of words with prefixes. Okay, but not every word has a prefix. Most words have a root term, and in fact, they can have multiple. Almost every word, although it's not 100%, has a suffix and there would only be one because there's only one end to the term. Not every word has this prefix. However, if it does, it usually refines the meaning or additionally defines the meaning. 
if we are looking in the textbook or on the word list to know if this is a prefix, you are going to see that the dash comes at the end of the letters. So an example here is hypo, and you can see the little dash at the end, which is kind of like the puzzle piece over here, right? Okay, so that little nice little dash at the end designates that it is a prefix. So let's take a look at a couple examples. All right, so we're gonna look at two words here with all three word parts, and I wanna make sure I kind of looked at terms with all of the word parts for today's discussion. But what I wanna do is take all of these word parts and create a full definition for the term that you are looking at. And when you are defining a full term, officially we always start a definition with the meaning of the suffix. The rest just flows however it makes the most sense in English, and that's usually a prefix followed by a root, although these two could be flipped around as long as you start your definition with the meaning of the suffix, okay, you have a correct definition. So let's look at a couple examples. All right, so I'm gonna give you a prefix here, and the first prefix is hypo. Again, you can tell it's a prefix with the dash after. I'm giving you a root with the word tenso, and you can tell it's a root with the backslash, or that dash, and the O. And I have a suffix of ion, and you can tell that's a suffix because the dash is at the beginning here. Okay, so let's first spell this word, right? Prefix at the beginning, root in the middle, suffix at the end, but what happens, okay, to those vowels? Okay. Well, between the root term and the suffix, the suffix started with a vowel. So we got rid of that combining vowel. So tension, T-E-N-S-I-O-N, -E we didn't, we dropped the vowel. However, that rule does not apply when you are combining either two root terms or a prefix. We always just keep the vowel. So it is hypotension. The only time we drop a combining vowel is between the root and the suffix. Hypo means low. Tenso means pressure, and ion means an action of. Okay, and these are definitions, okay, that we'll, we'll keep going over. There's going to be word lists and things to memorize, but I've given you the definition for today. When we make an official definition, we always start with the meaning of the suffix. So in this case, ion means action of, so we want to make sure that we start our definitions with the words action of, and then it makes most, most sense to say low pressure and not pressure low. You could have, however, and still been correct, said pressure that is too low. Okay, you can always add filler words, okay, to our definitions. But we always have to start our definition with the meaning of the suffix. Okay, let's do one more. All right, so I've got a prefix here, hyper, and we can tell it's a prefix. Again, the dash is at the end. Our root is glyco, and we can tell it's a root with our backslash and our O. And our suffix is emia. Okay, we can tell it's a suffix because our dash is at the beginning. All right, so first let's define each of the individual terms and spell it. Okay, and hyperglycemia, and remember, even if there had been a vowel at the end of the prefix to the root, we keep that all of the time. There is no rule for which we keep or drop it. We just keep it. However, because our suffix starts with a vowel, we drop the combining vowel, so it's hyperglycemia. Last, let's define the term, and don't forget, we start our definitions with the meaning of the suffix. So we have to start our definitions with the word blood condition. And in this, in this case, I'm going to go with blood condition with excessive sugar, of excessive sugar, a blood condition where there is excessive sugar. Any of those would have been perfectly acceptable as long as we start our definition, okay, with the meaning of the suffix. All right, hopefully this was helpful to you guys. There will be some additional posted videos as we go through various um, different chapters and learn some new terms.